Hi, it's Mike from Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To, and on today's video, we take a look at how to install the Thermalrite AXP90 47 on the Intel LGA1700 socket. Now, the reason for this video is I bought this and I've looked at the instructions, and they don't make an awful lot of sense. So, it does seem that somewhere along the pipeline of the manufacturer and also the instruction manual, there's a few discrepancies. So if you have bought one of these for a little mini ITX build or a compact PC, and you're looking at the instructions and wondering what the heck is going on, hopefully this should clear things up for you. So some things which are exactly as it says in the user guide is the back plate. You still use the back plate as you would normally. Uh, the motherboard, you still, with the Intel setup, you basically have it bare. So that is as you'd expect. Where it gets a little bit more convoluted is there are uh, two lots of screws, which you can see on, on the floor there. So there's one set of short thread and there's one set of long thread. And it doesn't really specify which one you're supposed to use. So basically you can use either is what it comes down to. So if you're looking at it and screwing them in thinking, well, which one do I actually need? You can use either. Now, if you use the longer ones, you will notice there's probably about five millimeters of additional thread available to tighten up at the end. So if you're working in a chassis where there isn't a lot of room behind the motherboard, then potentially you might want to use the shorter ones. Uh, for me personally, I'm going to be using the shorter ones. Seems a little bit more sensible. That means just a little bit less screwing to do. So that clears up the first thing. So these just screw in to the outer edges. Very simple, very straightforward. Now when I say screw into the outer edges, if you've looked in the manual already, you'll notice that it says that this normally should come out of the factory set up ready for the Intel LGA 1200 or 11 5X range. But that doesn't seem to be the case because if you look closely at the arms themselves, it actually states on their 1700. So what they've done is they've actually redone the manufacturing and, and they've put the 1700 or LGA 1700 brackets on as default. So there's basically no changes made whatsoever. So again, if you are doing this for the first time and you're thinking, well, that looks right, it fits. Why am I doing this? You don't have to do it. So that is essentially it. So screw in the smaller threaded ones. That'll be absolutely fine. The next part of the task is to actually put some thermal paste onto your CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And actually while I'm doing that, I'll move the camera in a little bit closer so you can see the finer details of the rest of the installation. Okay, so we've applied our thermal paste. Now you probably do wanna actually do the thermal paste to start with because you actually mount the CPU cooler upside down. So if we look at the actual cooler itself, you can see there is this elongated section here, which actually is perfect for the elongated processor. So remove the plastic film, make sure that has been removed, and also make sure that because this is square, you could actually mount it across, which is probably not such a great idea. So make sure that the block here matches up with the processor. So I was gonna stick this over the top into the holes which are on the motherboard already. Then when you've done that, you can lift the board up and actually what you need to do is to flip it over onto the back side. So there we go. So you can see now those screws are poking through and that is basically how far the screws come through. If you use the longer ones, it'll be considerably higher, about four or five millimeters. So you can see the screws there, 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 and there. And if you look at it, just make sure they're all pretty even and that there's no kind of high spots or anything like that. So the next part to do is to grab your bracket, which we've got here. And you'll notice on the bracket itself, there is actually markings on it, which say uh, AMD and also Intel. So if I spin that around so you can see it on your side, you can just about see that hopefully. There we go, LGA 1200, 1700. So it doesn't matter which way up it goes on this because the cutouts are the same either way. And you'll notice that underneath there is some plastic here to protect the motherboard. So you want it so that it's facing outward with your particular processor name or platform name actually written on the outside there. And then place this over the threads, which is a little bit on the tight side. And just push that right down. And you'll kind of hear it getting into place. So you'll notice that the screws for the actual retention mechanism are visible through there. So the next thing to do is to grab the little nut washers, which are these, and you want one of these on each one of the corners. There are actually five included in my particular package. 
So you've got a spare just in case you drop one down the back of the sofa. So you can do these up pretty much by hand as far as, uh, as, far as you need to. They do actually include in the kit a little screwdriver adapter there. So if you want to do it a little bit more, you can do. If you're going to do this, do it equal. So one, two, three, and then do the opposing corner. One, two, three, and then just move around in a star shape. I think that's pretty much bang on because I'm feeling quite a bit of resistance there. So that is pretty much it. The last thing to do is to flip it over and then you can plug in your PWM for your fan into your motherboard's PWM header. On this instance, it's just over here. Obviously, do whatever you need to do. Make sure the fan is spinning freely. But that is effectively it for installing the Thermalrite AXP90-X47 onto the Intel LGA1700 platform. So there you go, there is how to install the Thermalrite AXP90-47 on the Intel LGA1700 platform. Uh, the reason why I'm doing this video as well is because we are actually doing some thermal testing on this against the Intel stock cooler. So if you are a ITX enthusiast and you're building a PC into a smaller form factor and you want to see, is this cooler actually worth the around about 18 pounds that it costs? Is it going to be improvement over the Intel one? I'm certainly hoping it will be. But if you want to find out, you're going to have to subscribe to the channel to find out more. And also, if you've enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Always helps the channel. If you've got any comments or questions on this, Feel free to reach out in the comments section below or turn split over on our Discord. Links for that will also be in the video description. But for now, I've been Mike. This is Mike's Unboxing Reviews and How To. And hopefully we'll catch you in the very next video. Thanks for watching.